Hi, I'm Chef Heather with the Goldring Center for Culinary Medicine at Tulane University. Today, we're going to show you how thinking like a chef can help make your home cooking safer, easier, and more efficient. I will be reviewing some basic kitchen safety principles and showing you how you can set yourself up for success by learning how to set up your kitchen workstation and how to handle your most important tool in the kitchen, your knife. Even when at home, it's important to think about how you're dressed to enhance safety in the kitchen. Closed-toed shoes are a must for preventing cuts and burns. Long hair should be pulled back away from the face, and short fingernails are important for both safety while cutting and for food safety. As a reminder, you always want to wash your hands before beginning any kitchen activity, frequently during cooking and before eating. 20 seconds with soap and water does the trick. Setting up your workstation will also help with safety and create a more efficient workflow, making food prep a little easier and more enjoyable. You want to ensure that you have a non-slip surface for your cutting board. At GCCM, we like to use this shelf liner. This comes in a roll and can easily be cut to the desired shape and size of your cutting board. If you don't have this, you can also just use a damp paper towel. This is going to create a nice non-slip surface for your cutting. The next thing you'll want to consider are mise en place bowls. Mise en place is a French term, which means everything in its place. It's a great chef trick for staying organized in the kitchen. Use these bowls to collect all of your cut ingredients. This will make your cooking session a breeze. You'll also want to consider a bowl or container for collecting food scraps. This will eliminate frequent trips back and forth to the trash can or compost bin. Measuring cups and spoons are a must. This is going to allow you to quickly and easily measure all of the ingredients that you need for your recipe. Our next tool is the bench scraper. At GCCM, we really love this version. It's very inexpensive and easy to find online or in cooking stores, and it makes easy work of gathering up cut ingredients, putting them into your mise en place bowls, or gathering them for your scraps container. Oftentimes, people will want to use the blade of their knife for this. Unfortunately, it's not very safe to do that, and you'll dull the knife blade very easily. For a few dollars, this is a really good investment. You'll also want to consider any other equipment you may need for your particular recipe. Maybe you need a peeler for peeling carrots or other vegetables. If you're cooking proteins, you may need an instant read thermometer. Once calibrated, these make taking the temperature of your cooked proteins a breeze. Maybe you need a whisk or a microplane zester. Some other helpful tips to set you up for success in the kitchen include reviewing your recipe. You're going to want to look at both your list of ingredients and your directions carefully before you start cutting or cooking anything. This is going to include gathering all of your ingredients that you need and figuring out which pots and pans you'll need and preheating the oven if necessary. You'll also want to wash all of your produce by rinsing in water before you get started. It's important to clean as you go. Wash your cutting board between tasks, and if you're only using one board, make sure to cut all of your vegetables before you move on to your poultry, meats, and fish. Your knife is your most important tool in the kitchen. Think of it as an extension of your hand. You're going to want to keep your knife sharp. A sharp knife is less likely to cause an injury. And use the right knife for the job. The two most commonly used knives are going to be your chef's knife and your paring knife. A chef's knife will be used for most kitchen tasks. The curved blade allows for a rocking motion. Most cutting will happen on the back half of the blade. Rocking the knife lets the knife do the work and reduces fatigue. A paring knife is used for smaller tasks that require finer detail. Examples include coring a tomato, removing the seeds from a jalapeno, and deveining shrimp. We want to ensure that we are holding our knives properly, both for safety and efficiency in the kitchen. 
First, let's go over the parts of the knife. Back here, we have the handle. This is the blade. This is the edge of the blade. And then that area between the handle and the blade is considered the bolster. This is where we actually want to start our grip on the knife. We want to place our forefinger and our thumb on either side, just above that bolster area. We'll then take the rest of our fingers and wrap them around the handle. This really makes the knife an extension of your hand. We don't wanna let our index finger creep up to the top like this. It may feel more natural at first and you may think you have more control, but gripping the knife securely at the bolster with those two fingers is really gonna give you the best control. The grip may feel odd at first, but the more you practice, the more natural it will become. The positioning of your other hand is just as important. Fingertips should be tucked into a claw. This will prevent you from accidentally slicing your fingers. The opposite hand can also come flat on top during mincing. This would be for things like garlic or herbs. Some other helpful tips regarding knives. Don't try to catch a knife if you drop it. Simply let it fall to the floor. And always hand wash your knives. This will extend the life of even an inexpensive knife. We hope this video helps set you up for kitchen success at home. Ready to get cooking? Check out our website, goldringcenter.tulane.edu for recipes and more video lessons.